Man, that is smooth. Like two sticks of butter. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson. Firefighters and rescue workers have one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. But a new engineering firm called Bailout Systems has a new design that is throwing these heroes a lifeline. I can't wait to find out more about what they're doing. I'm Ben Krupp. I'm the uh, lead mechanical engineer on this project. I'm uh, Michael Ragsdale, founder and CEO of Bailout Systems. Essentially, this got started way back when a friend uh, told me about a problem in the fire industry. So he told me I need to quit designing toasters. And with my experience in the military and rock climbing and stuff like that, he said, you need to come up with a better way for us to jump out of a building. Hey, guys. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Ben? Nice to meet you. Good to nice see to you. Michael, good to see you guys. So you guys are doing something really awesome here. You're finding a way for firefighters or rescue workers to be able to jump out of buildings. You're, you guys are saving lives here, right? How does this, how does this system work? How, how are you able to get someone to jump out of a four or five story building with, without hurting themselves? Well, that is the, uh, that is the challenge at hand. So, yeah. you know, if, uh, if you think about a roller coaster, you sure. know, at the, at the top of the hill, you have a whole bunch of potential energy um, and very little kinetic energy. And at the bottom of the hill, you have transitioned all of that potential energy to kinetic energy. You're moving really quickly. Um, so a firefighter has the same situation. At the, at the top of the building, when he's on the roof, he has a whole bunch of potential energy and very little or no kinetic energy. We need to get him to the bottom of the, of the building without producing a whole bunch of kinetic energy. So really our goal is to take his potential energy and move it into some other energy form, not kinetic. Not kinetic. Um, so the way you do that is basically by converting your potential energy into heat energy. Um, so you can, you know, rub two sticks together to generate, um, you know, friction, and that friction is, you know, is is taking kinetic energy in this case and turning it into into heat energy. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take that potential energy transition it into kinetic energy and then use the kinetic energy to generate heat and to burn off the, um, the energy that the firefighter um, would have normally hit the ground with. Um, and that makes a lot of sense because the less kinetic energy you have, the less velocity, so you're hitting the ground slower. Exactly. And, and with less force. Exactly. So what has been the biggest challenge in putting your design together? Problem was it was the size of a canister. Okay which was, was oddly enough, it was a step up because they could wear it on their air pack and they didn't even know it was there. So you would have like the harness, you'd have the rope that was smaller than this, all contained in a canister. They would jump and it lowered them to the ground. So then Ben got involved and when Ben got involved, he took what we did, the size of a canister and literally got it down to the size of a soda can. And since then, Haskell and Ben, both the two engineers, they got our device down to the size of a hockey puck. So you guys have shrunk it down considerably, like right. probably 80 or 90 percent. Right. And that's got to be so great for the firefighters because it's something that they don't have to like worry about getting in the way of their equipment as they're actually doing their job of putting out fires. Exactly. So Haskell, you've got you, your guys' experimental setup here. What are some of the things that you're looking for as you guys are testing? So we've mocked up the firefighter with something simple, and then we want to be able to measure how that energy is being absorbed by our device. That's what's going to control the firefighter's descent. So we have figured out that if you measure the force, okay, and you measure the speed that the rope is coming out, okay, the, the velocity, right? Yeah, the velocity. Okay. So then you have you have the force times the velocity, which is going to give you power when you look at how long you have been doing it. Okay. So that's basic, the basic equation for power. And so the bag falling down is power being generated, and then this is where power gets absorbed. So we measure this, the basic things that allow us to, con to measure and control the energy absorption, and that's how we change our design. So, what, so just so I got, got your, your setup clear, so you're measuring the force yep. of, the, of what, what's uh, the, that's being, the, the rope that's the being rope. pulled. The tension in the rope. Okay. Yep. And then how fast that rope is being pulled. being being pulled, okay, and that will give you, let you know how much energy is being dispersed. Yes. 
Okay. That's exactly right. Well, I, I definitely want to see, see you guys okay. test it. All right, well, you guys yeah. ready to rock and roll? I think so. All right, let's do it. ready to go. All right, light is green. Okay. The light is green, the trap is clean. You guys want to back up a little bit in case something happens it's not supposed to. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Safety first. Ready to drop? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. One, two, three. That is smooth. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Jeez. Man, Bruce Wayne doesn't have anything on you guys. And so that's a cold turkey setup from data that we had collected already. So it performed the way it was supposed to. And if it didn't, you guys would. We wouldn't be very surprised and disappointed. <laughs> but you guys would then use that to make a change in your design. Yes. Yeah. That's a, this is the test buck that generates the information that will allow us to design the one that goes on your belt. That's awesome. So we can minimize the size and know that it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, and if you, if you think about how many times it hasn't worked or it hasn't come back, like that's got to give you guys good information. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. bad, bad information is good information. A lot of people don't want to fail, but having the limits of where failure occurs is very important in understanding the true performance of anything you build. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're getting data out of that failure, yep. that's 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 information for you to know for next time. That's right. That's awesome. So that was awesome to watch you guys test te test your material here. Yeah, well, I'm glad you guys were able to come and check it out. The uh, we we have a lot of fun doing this. I know we we talked about a lot of the failures, a lot of the process, but at the end of the day, we come here and we 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 test, and uh, it's cool to see the progress from where you know we started with this canister, and now we got something the size of a hockey puck. So so. What are you guys hearing from people in the field, some of these rescue workers, about how your product is, uh, is helping impact their, their jobs? Well, that, that's, that's actually the best part. When we go and we test it out in the field with firefighters and they jump it for the first time and you see the look on their face when they land and they've just jumped from like 25, 50, 60 feet off the ground and they, they literally land, you know, sitting in a seated position. They don't, sometimes they don't even land on their feet. And just to see the fact that they realized that they didn't have to do anything. All they had to do was jump and, and everything was taken care of. That is probably one of the most gratifying things I think that any of us get from this. That's awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much for inviting me out thank here. Thank you, Chris. You guys are doing awesome work. Yeah, it's been great. And thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next time on Science Around Sensi. I can't wait to find out more about what, about what they're doing. I talking is hard when you think about it. Confidence in the fact that they didn't have to use their hands. Oh my <laughs> lord. <laughs> That's a good blooper. Maybe when the lights go out. All right. All right.